realised that there wasn't going to be an opportunity to even potentially play sevens again. Then you're thinking about, well, how am I going to, be able to provide for my family? We were thought we were supposed to be going to the Olympics and now we haven't got a job. But at the same time, we're healthy, you know, we can still live and get through life. So it's just something small that's been taken from our identity, but it doesn't mean that we're lost as people. I am joined here in the Loughborough Sun by a man who has scored more tries in the World Sevens game than anyone in history ever. Dan Norton, welcome to the open side. Norton, Norton skips to the other end, skips him through the middle. Norton will be chasing the bounce here, will sit up for Dan Norton. Of course he will! So Dan, hello. We've, yeah. we've caught you bang in the middle of Olympic prep with Team GB Sevens. How's training? Yeah, it's been good. Um, finding my lungs after being out for about 10 months, but um, enjoying being back with the boys, charging around. Days like this make it even more enjoyable. Do they build you into it nice and gently so it's not too hard? Um, yes, I suppose they do, to be fair. They do look after us. It's quite a, uh, a mixed age, but the old guys understand how to manage the loads and manage expectation as well. And that's you? <laughs> that's me, yeah. So you've had all this time off. Um, so we'll rewind and we'll talk about the lockdown thing, if you don't mind, because it affects everybody differently, but I often think that elite athletes, in this case, elite rugby players, might be particularly affected because what you do relies so heavily on being around teammates. When you're on your own, firstly, physically, how did it affect you? What were you able to do? What could you be bothered to do? How was motivation? Yeah, so obviously, spending the time back to obviously last March when obviously lockdown kind of kicked in, it was... It was in a weird and wonderful time. It was, it was nice because we had a bit of time away and traveling for the year and going to the Olympics and time at home was great. But then and at the same time, we all thought it'd be a couple of weeks, you know, a couple of months max. Yeah, fast forward kind of a couple more months and we're still in the, we were still in the same position. And that's kind of where it became a bit more taxing. And when we were looking to still kind of prep for the Olympics, we didn't have the opportunity apart from running and passing the ball into the air to yourself. Mm -hmm. There was nothing else you could really do. So you didn't have access to weights, couldn't do any real kind of running and training or even passing skill work. So, yeah, that was probably frustrating. Um, it was probably a bit of a blessing, the fact that the Olympics was kind of postponed by a year. More from a mental point of view, you kind of sat there thinking about, am I going to be ready? What else, like, is there going to be enough time to get into good shape? And things like that. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of mental kind of ups and downs around that whole period. Again, I'm sure it's the same for everybody in that kind of period as well. But um, for me personally, yeah, it, it hit me hit me quite a bit in understanding around what I needed to do as a person to get myself into position. Um, and I didn't have all the opportunities and facilities to even get there. So you go into lockdown as a GB Sevens player looking forward to the Olympics. Then the Olympics gets canceled and you think, well, that's probably a good thing because we're not ready. Then your contracts aren't renewed. So suddenly you're not a GB Sevens player anymore. You're, so how hard does that hit you? I know there are other there are other lads in the same boat, but I don't suppose that makes it much easier, does it? For us as a team, it, it was a prolonged kind of period of about from March onwards to kind of August. Um, and there was conversations on, on Zoom and we have weekly, uh, monthly kind of catch ups. And as, as much as they were rewarding to be seeing the guys again and having a bit of banter and having that kind of release of being back in that team environment, as it kind of got closer to the end of the contract, we realised that there wasn't going to be an opportunity to even potentially play sevens again. Yep. And that's probably what really struck a nerve and those sleepless nights and then you're thinking about well how am I going to, be able to provide for my family what's next like this is kind of what I've been doing for a while like we were thought we were supposed to be going to the Olympics and now we haven't got a job so yeah that was tough um and I think again we for us as a group we've experienced we've been doing sevens and being professional sport for a while doing what we've been doing um and yeah we had some good conversations as a group around the bigger picture is there may be an Olympics next year we may be involved, but at the same time, like I said earlier, we have our, we're healthy, you know, we can still live and get through life. So it's just something small that's been taken from our identity, but it doesn't mean that we, we're lost as people. That kind of gave a bit more kind of life to, help you, can't to it? us to actually, yeah. yeah, to get over that initial kind of setback. Your, your last Olympic Games uh, in Rio, you get to the final and everyone, like everyone I knew was glued to it. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you something which I hope doesn't offend you, yeah. but it's what I felt watching it. I felt all of me desperate for you boys to win 50 nil, 100 nil. And I watched Fiji play and thought, I'm not sure I've ever seen a sevens team that would have beaten that team today. Because yeah. I watched them the whole way through and they were magnificent, but actually they weren't much more mag any more magnificent than you were. Yeah. 
But on that day, did you feel like that there was something in them that wouldn't be beaten? They were just on it. It was an emotional rollercoaster playing in the Olympics full stop. We then had a quarterfinal and semi-final, which we then won by one score, all kind of last place, all very close. So the, the elation, the ups and downs of playing sevens on a whole is tiring. Um, getting to the final was an, an amazing feeling. And we were all excited and just buoyed by the opportunity of playing for a gold medal. And that's what we've been prepping for for the 16, 14 weeks before that. So it was amazing to get there. I think when we were stood in the tunnel next to them and they were singing and whatever else, like, you know, we thought to ourselves, like, this is our opportunity. We feel great. We're looking forward to this. And yeah, obviously, for us, we didn't control the ball very well. They won a lot of kickoffs. They were just playing, you know, how they wanted to play. And we didn't, unfortunately, have a, have a say on the first couple of, the first couple of tries. But, um, yeah, it's something that, which took a lot of time to look back on and actually re-watch the final. Probably still haven't watched it back properly. Yeah. Um, Think you ever will? Yeah, I probably will. And stuff. If you win gold this time, you might watch that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, they were actually on fire. And I think it was quite nice that we had front row seats to something quite special, to be fair. And their first Olympic medal, their first gold medal. So um, yeah, they were on fire. And unfortunately, we, we were second best. So I guess immediately when you lose, the final, the Olympic Games, its devastation and all yeah. that. Has that turned to an amount of pride? Has it turned to a feeling of how wonderful it was to even be involved in the Olympic Games as a rugby player, which is something most rugby players never even think of and never even dreamed of? Um, or does it still actually burn you a little bit? Obviously, after the game, you're pretty, you're pretty annoyed, you're pretty frustrated, you've, got, you've missed an incredible opportunity at a gold medal. Um, mm. So yeah, I think we were all pretty down for about the first 15, 20 minutes. And then then you kind of realise, well, actually, we've still won a silver medal. And I know it's not it's not really the, the attitude you want to have, but I think, you know, some guys have been training for this Olymp that last Olympics for four years of the cycle. So for us to come together after 14 weeks and come and get a silver was an incredible achievement. And something I think, again, you need to have perspective on when we were in there. But when we were in that element after the game, it was, from being devastation to quite a bit of elation of being like, we've actually won a medal here. Again, Simmons is never going to be perfect, unless you obviously win every game like Fiji. Yeah. But, you know, there's going to be ups and downs through a whole of a Sevens tournament and it's, it's never going to be plain sailing. So for us to come away with the silver, like, you know, it was something so special to be able to show it to my kids as well. So as someone who's played so much, scored so many tries, seen it all 40 times, before a big match, playing for GB or playing for England, are you Mr. Confident? Are you the guy everyone looks to and thinks we can all chill because Dan's chill and he's been here a hundred times before, or are you actually bricking it like everyone else? Yeah, I think with experience, you kind of give off that kind of relaxed kind of face, but at the same time, yeah, there is a lot of your mind spinning out a little bit. You're thinking about the game, you're thinking about your involvements, and yeah, it does, even through the warm up, you're still thinking about kind of the game. You're trying to kind of concentrate on your next kind of job. There's a lot of kind of self doubt in a way. Um, and I think it's it's come with experience of speaking to psychologists around actually it's quite natural. Mm. And I think that's probably the, that was probably the easiest thing of actually being okay with the, that kind of chat. Cause your, your mind's always working. It's always processing something. So it's okay, it's gonna tell you, you are rubbish at times. Yep. I think for me, it was just understanding that there is a, that's gonna happen and it's okay. Um, the time where it kind of, and then once I've kind of got my shirt on, once we're in a changing room, once we've kind of, done our final kind of wheeze and we've all chatted and we have yeah. our kind of final tactical chats and you're sitting in the tunnel and you're sitting next to these six foot odd guys and you're literally thinking bloody hell here we go yeah you still feel those nerves um but then as soon as you run out and the roar of the crowd the kind of it just kind of brings you you know 12 feet tall and you feel you feel immense and I, I think nothing really replicates that do you acknowledge sort of on a daily basis that there is a responsibility that comes with greatness because the younger kids are watching you or do you think oh, i don't want to think about that well, I think the nice thing and the one reason why we play team sports is because everybody's equal. Even though there is a, yeah. a hierarchy in a way, through banter, through competition, just through doing your sport. Through mistakes. Through mistakes, yeah. you're all equal. So, like, I can have a good day and be told by the boys I'm rubbish. I can have a bad day and, again, be told even more so that I'm rubbish. So these things keep you honest. These things are what drives me. When we then go and then compete as a nation, as G GB, as England, as whatever we are, like that opportunity to then showcase who we are in a training field on to the world is what is the most important and the most enjoyable thing and element. We all have an opportunity and responsibility to be role models as well. And we all can help those aspiring young kids fall in love with their sports, fall in love with playing sport, team sport, rugby sevens. And that's kind of why 
is also probably one of the most enjoyable things about playing sevens. There are a lot of kind of kids and stuff who see you and have an opportunity to actually think one day that could be me. And yeah. I was the same when I was 10, 12, growing up watching the Olympics, watching um, 15 rugby and stuff and seeing those guys and you kind of... The Hong Kong sevens. Yeah, exactly. You kind of unassumably kind of assume that, well, you kind of just take yourself into that mould. And, you know, we have that power to be able to inspire a generation. And that's something that, you know, I, I've only just realised, well, I've realised as you get older and you see, you see more people around the world. So... You're an old dog around these parts. You've probably got how long left in you? Do you reckon seven or eight years? A couple more cycles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Seven, eight, 12 years. About another 20 years in you, in those old hammies, yeah. But once once it is all done, do you, do, you ever, do you think about the future and what's next? Or are you kind of just want to concentrate on this and deal with that when it comes? Yeah, I, I, I'm one of those guys who hasn't really got a, an exit plan. No, That's all um, of us, mate, don't worry. Yeah. There isn't one, there isn't one with I don't plan. think there's many jobs that really replicate what we do here on a day-to-day -day basis. The kind of the team effort, the traveling, having a few beers in different countries, like it all just adds into an amazing kind of experience. And, you know, being able to push yourself to the limit kind of each day, each week is just something you can't really replicate on, in most jobs. Um, so I haven't really found anything I'm, I'm really excited for post rugby, but at the same time, you do start cherishing, you start counting down, don't you, when you get to a certain age. And I'm just enjoying again, being back playing sevens. I'm enjoying, you know, being back pushing myself with an amazing couple of guys for, uh, for something bigger than what we do normally. Big, the Olympics is bigger than the sport we play now. It's yeah. so much bigger and that's something that's a massive driver for us. Dan, thanks so much for the chat today. Keep training, keep eating right. You've got another few cycles in your year. And um, good luck in Tokyo. Hope Thank you right. win the thing. Cheers. People just see the word gay and they expect you to have a shaved head and be really bulky. And it's just like, what era do you live in? You still get the standard comments like, you're too pretty to be a rugby player, you're too pretty to be gay. You could vote whether you wanted to kneel or if you didn't, but the majority of the girls said, yeah, we want to kneel, we want to show like, our respect towards Black Lives Matter movement. For me, I just think, why not? Like, why, why wouldn't you? I was lucky doing athletics. I had loads of black athletes to look up to. If I can inspire the young girls that are coming through to play the sport, yeah, if I can do that, then my job's done.